Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Roco Motion in a five minute pool on ICC. Happy New Year to you guys. Hope you're not watching this video with too much of a pounding headache. <laughs> in truth, I'm recording this video about a week prior to the new year, but just wanted to make sure I get the Happy New Year's in. And let me know in the comments what you did for New Year's. Did you party it up? Did you have a quiet night at home? Tell me what's going on. All right, so Roco Motion is allowing us to go into a Slav, which I will take. So he's 2251, not bad at all. Yeah, knight e5 is one of the main moves. Let's play knight bd7. If knight takes c4, I think I'll play queen c7 and look to play e5. I had a game against international master Mishra Swams from the London Chess Classic in this line. We'll see how much of the theory I can remember. Yeah, knight fd7. Here there's two moves, f6 and g5. I'll play f6 and then g5 next. This is following my game with swams. Here right has a few different moves. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. I think even knight e3 is a move. Against this one I'm supposed to take here. And in fact, there's a game going on at the Qatar Masters between, uh, or there was a game played today between Check. Wesley So and Vladimir Kopian. And my recollection of the theory of this line is that black supposedly gets pretty decent compensation for the pawn. Currently black's down a pawn, but supposedly you get some pretty good comp. Okay, so let's castle queenside. Black does have the two bishops to point to. So I'm hoping that that kind of makes up for the pawn deficit. Let's play rook g8, which threatens bishop h3. Yeah, so naturally they're gonna to wanna to sidestep that. And then I'm gonna play f5 and put the bishop on g7. I believe this is the proper place for the bishop. So, hmm, do I want to do it right away or maybe bishop e6 first? Bishop e6 first could be useful, but yeah, let's do that first actually, because I think if bishop g7, maybe rook d6 Check. could be played. So we'll allow Check. an exchange for the time being. And I still want to put the bishop here. There's also bishop b3. Let's bear in mind. Bishop b3 attacking the rook. I think that could be good, so let's do that. Because that means that the knight might have to babysit the a-pawn. Check. Now I think I should take and do this. And I'm always threatening to eliminate this knight and then take a4. And I could have a runaway a-pawn. I think white's got to be concerned about that. Aha, uh -huh. so they're going to offer a trade to go into an opposite color bishop endgame. Yeah, bishop d1's a good move. Now, maybe I can bring up my king, though. Okay, so let's take here. And, yeah, I'm going to try to use my king aggressively, I think. And attempt to win this a-pawn. I'm hoping he can't organize an attack on f5 too, too soon. Hmm, this could get interesting. b4, in some respects, helps me, because now... Yeah, I'm going to take with my king, and my, my b-pawn is going to be pretty fast after I take on a4. Check. He might have to play f3 and e4 as quickly as he can. But the thing is, after e4, I'm going to ignore that pawn. I think I can just push my b-pawn instead. Yeah, let's just push the b-pawn. If he takes, that's fine. He has triple pawns. On that one, maybe I can play bishop h6. Or do I want to get my king in first? It's a tough call. Hmm. Bishop h6, he's going to go e6. Hmm. I feel like I should bring my king up as well. b4, king f2, b3, king e2, king here. Now I think I should push this pawn. Let's just get going with that guy. So king here, king d2, b2, check. Yeah, that must be winning. I'd be surprised if it was not. Oh, he has king d3. That move I missed. Hmm. 
Okay, so let's do this now and induce him to play this move. Because then I'm going to bring my bishop back to f8 and challenge him to play a move. I think it's helpful that... Uh, oh, wow, he's just going to do this. But can't I just push b2? b2, you sack your knight. You're not going to be in time. b2, he's going to play knight c3. But that might be some sort of zugzwang. Zugzwang. I think this is winning. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but just bishop e7 or bishop d6. Hmm. Yeah, let's just come here. Because what does he do now? Hmm. Let's come here. I'm trying to get him to play knight b1, so I can go king a2, knight c3, king a1, and then promote my pawn. He's going to run out of pawn moves. If h4, I can maybe even just take it, but I'll probably just play h5 for simplicity's sake. King back. Okay, so let's go here now. And then we can bring up our c pawn. Or maybe play knight c, or bishop to f6. C5 also should just win, though. He's going to play knight d2. I'm missing a lot of stuff in this ending. King here? Okay, I'm going to do this, because if king c2, I have bishop b4 at least. So I think he might have to play knight c3. Okay, now this should be zug. Or Zug, Zug Swang. I've got a minute left, a little less than a minute, but yeah, this is winning. Run him out of moves. Instructive ending. Yeah, I think he pretty much has to play e7, and then I can take it. But he's going down. Yeah, he resigned. Hmm. Well, that was a little trickier to win than I thought it would be, because after b4 and a5, I, I had a real good feeling, because it looked like he was helpless against my queenside pawn advance. Yeah, so this is an intriguing line whereby black does give up a pawn, but they have potential with that queenside pawn plus, or queenside majority plus the bishop pair. So let's go back and take a look at this one. I'm going to skip the opening or the explanation of the opening, because this is all theory. I would refer you to that game that I played against Mishra Swams, round four of the London Chess Classic, if you're interested in learning more about this line. So, yeah, he took on e5. It's also possible to play bishop takes e5, like I said. Knight e3 is another move. But uh, take, and now I take on f4. Knight takes e5 is playable, but g takes f4 is considered to be stronger according to theory as far as my understanding goes so yes you do lose a pawn in this line Check. but as you saw i think the compensation is sufficient for black i'll try to post that wesley so versus uh, vladimir kopian game as well because that would be good to compare to what we had here so let me just add the engine in right around here after g takes f4 so the engine wants me to play rook g8 straight away so as to force king h1 yeah probably black can throw that in almost whenever they want. I don't know if there's too much of a difference. I do want a castle just so my rook is participating and my king is safe. e3, rook g8, king h1. Yeah, and now I went for f5, looking to put the bishop on g7, because if I don't put the bishop on that long diagonal, I fear that it's not going to be well placed. I think getting an f5 and bishop g7 is something black should strive for in this line. The computer, on the other hand, thinks that bishop g4 is potentially stronger, stopping a rook from coming to d1. Looks slightly artificial to me, but maybe. Something like this, and then bishop into b3 again. Bishop e7, just develop, okay. The only misgiving I have about putting the pawn on f5 is that it is a target in the future. It's a fixed weakness, and it's on a light square, so maybe white can try to attack it with their bishop and or knight later on. But as played, check. So we swapped. Check. 
bishop f3, and now I started probing on the queen side. Hmm. Yeah, a5 also seems like a good move. Or bishop g7 straight away. But I liked bishop b3 because it reminds white that the a pawn is weak. But maybe in Check. view of this bishop d1 move coming up, maybe I should hold off on playing bishop b3 because here I actually missed that bishop d1 was possible. Otherwise, I think white's even in bigger trouble because I'm simply threatening to take on c3 and then take here, whereupon my a pawn would be tremendously strong. So this move may save the day for white. Now, if I take on c3, that allows bishop takes b3, and I do win b2, but he's going to play bishop e6 or bishop c2 and go after f5. This didn't look clear to me, this opposite color bishop endgame. And in fact, that Wesley So versus a Copian game was an opposite color bishop ending where white won. Uh, I think it was the same type of bishops, light square bishop versus dark square bishop too. So, I mean, black does have a three to one majority, but I am losing this pawn and white's going to have connectors in the center. So it's, it's pretty unclear. So I took here and then activated my king. Computer doesn't like that. It says a5 is better. So maybe I should go for a5 followed by b5. What does it think? King f1, b5, b3, king d6, and maybe try to walk up this way. So there must be a drawback to playing this as I did. Maybe not. Now it's starting to like king b6. Yeah, b4 strikes me as the wrong move, because in playing b4, white gives me a reason to play a5 Check. and further activates my king. I do exchange one set of pawns in playing this way, but my king is now up on the fifth rank, about to take the pawn, which white cannot defend. And then I'm going to have two connectors supported by the king and the dark square bishop. Seems difficult for white. So I think b4 is a significant mistake. Yeah, maybe he should play f3 and then e4 straight away and try to activate those pawns. Although even still, I think I would not take that pawn. It's important not to take, because if I take, then I give white two connectors, and suddenly you see the evaluation swing in white's favor. So if I just do as I did in the game, Check. where when white plays f3, I take here, they play e4 and just ignore it, there's no way that white can unlock the potential of the f pawns. That's important. So I did this. Ah, bishop d4, maybe even stronger. Check. Trying to ensure that the bishop is active after white plays e5. Although that does allow white's king to come closer to the queen side. So maybe playing b5 is also good. Mm, computer doesn't like it quite as much. Still a big edge for black, but yeah, maybe, maybe bishop d4 check is better. In fact, I think it was check. saying after this, don't push the b pawn, push the c pawn instead. Maybe so as to create a little wall here by putting the pawn on c4 and stopping the king from coming up to d3 and probably then push the b pawn. That makes sense. Yeah, actually, the bishop on d4 corrals the knight on d1 nicely. You can see that all the squares that the knight could go to are covered by that dark square bishop. So that's, that's a good reason for playing bishop d4 check. I didn't think about that during the game. So as played, I just push the b-pawn down the board. And white could take here, but these pawns are discounted. It's, it's like white only has one pass pawn right now. Not quite. I mean, there is potential with the f4 and the f3 pawn, but white would much prefer these pawns to be separated on complementary files next to each other, e and f. You can see black is just totally winning after b4. So he played e5 instead. I just pushed this pawn, b3. Thought about some other stuff, but I think pushing the pawn ultimately has got to be the way to go. Yeah, and I had a little bit of a thought in this stage of the game, because if I play b2, then white gets to play king c2, and the tables are going to turn quickly, because I lose the b-pawn. He's just going to play knight takes b2 next move. So bishop h6 is a clever way to force the e-pawn to go forward, because otherwise white can't defend this pawn. I mean, king e3 is out of the question, I just push b2. So, yeah, he has to play e6, and now this pawn isn't as, as menacing. Or, it is still menacing, but it's, uh, it's indefensible for, with white's other pawns. Like, the f4 pawn is not supporting it anymore. Also, this diagonal is opened, which is helpful in some circumstances. 
Like if he plays king c3, I can always give a check on g7 and then maybe put the bishop on f6. So I have a feeling I'm probably winning after bishop f8. And that seems to be reflected in the computer eval. So what could white do differently? King c4 or h4? But on those moves, I just take f4, right? Now play e6 and then bishop back. Yes, yeah, so this is also losing, it seems. Yeah, I have a feeling white is lost after b4. I think when black gets a5 in, this is too much. And the fact that I can ignore the e4 move and uh, keep white's e and f pawns at bay is huge. Like that really helps black. If you were just to blindly take on e4, then there's going to be a complete reversal and black might even lose. Okay, so going back to the game, e6, bishop f8, king c4, b2, knight here. And now we can employ Zugzwan as a mechanism to try to win this because by playing bishop d6, we say, here, make a move white, and white doesn't have many good moves to make. They have limited pawn moves. Any move with the king is going to allow king b3. And checking with the knight on b1 Check. is going to allow king a2, let's Check. say knight here, king a1, and I'm going to promote. And white's king can't come up to assist the e-pawn. You can see I'm creating a little wall here with my bishop. And also I have a pass c-pawn, which is going to ensure victory. So yeah, white's just running out of good things to do now. They played h3. I just waited with my bishop again. King d3, king b3, knight b1, yep, king a2, king c2, but now bishop b4 ends matters. Yeah, I don't think there's much else. If knight c3 check, check king here, king c2, I thought I could just play bishop f6 or bishop b4. Yeah, maybe, maybe bishop b4 is slightly more accurate to try to corral the knight. And now king a2, and once again, it will be Zugzwang. If, black, if white moves this knight, we just take it either on d2 or c3, and we're promoting next move. Note that white's e-pawn is not fast enough because we're check. promoting with check if they don't take the bishop. So this is how the game went. King c2, yeah, bishop b4, h4, h5, and white resigned. No useful moves to make. If they played e7, we can just take knight Check. c3 here, here, and again, bishop b4 at the end. White runs out of good moves. Okay, yeah, I like these type of queenless middle games that are kind of rich. I think a lot of people just don't enjoy playing or studying these positions, but I really do. So even though black was down a pawn, there is ample compensation in the form of the bishops and also that queenside majority, the three versus two, that can't be underestimated. And white's extra pawn is somewhat negated because it is a double left pawn. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Best wishes for 2016, everyone. Let's make it a good year. And let me know if you guys have any questions about this in the comments. Talk to you guys later. Bye.